God bless you. Thank you for being with us today here on Kingdom Concepts. We are so honored to have our wonderful guest, Dr. Daryl Rogers. There is nobody in the earth like this man of God right <laughs> here. I tell you. <laughs> perfect hair, perfect skin. Uh, but above that, my, my dear friend, all kidding aside, uh, this man has a tremendous amount of wealth and knowledge and wisdom. And I love every time that we're able to get together here in the studio because, man, sparks start flying. We just have a wonderful, wonderful time. So you are in for a treat. Christmas is coming early for you. Amen. I know that many of you are busy doing all of your holiday shopping and, you know, uh, working through some of the madness that is out there during this season. But we want to slow everything down. Amen. And we want to give attention today. Amen to the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Give attention to this season, this this event that took place, amen, that altered every one of our lives forever. Amen. And that is the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And so we welcome you, amen, to, to come and be a part of this day. It's going to be amazing. Amen. So many wonderful things are going on right now. Hmm. You know, what's kind of interesting for me is that I know that... Um, Right now, it's it's October, and we're recording for the audience that's watching right now in December. <clears throat> and we just came through an election. And you and I right now have no idea, as we're doing this episode, who won that election. So there's no telling what's on people's hearts and minds right now. Um, but what we do know is that God is always on the throne. <laughs> and He's always doing great and mighty things. When I think about where we're at right now. I believe that this this Christmas is going to be unlike any other that's taken place in this respect, Doc, that um, with uh, this pandemic that's been going on and and just the the overreach of government and different things concerning churches and people of faith, um, you know, you're really seeing the value system that people place on God and the things of God uh, you're either seeing the value of it or the or the lack of value of it in this hour. But I think it's important for us as believers to always be mindful, not just at Christmas time, you know, God's purpose for Jesus coming, but but every day, because it's vital for us to know that, right? Yeah, it is. Yeah. When it comes to when it comes to um, you know, the birth of Jesus Christ, you know, I think the scripture that comes to my mind immediately is found in John chapter 3, verse 16 and 17. And I want us to start right here, and I'm going to just turn you loose. Um, in John chapter 3, verse 16 and 17, this just sums up something that I think is so important because I, I think that a lot of people, they don't understand really the whole purpose of Jesus coming, why God did things the way that he did. You know, but we know that his motivation was all for love, amen? Because he says right here in, in John chapter 3, verse 16, it says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Verse 17, for God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Why was Jesus born? Why did, why did he have to come in this fashion? Well, you got to go all the way back to Genesis because... When Adam and Eve sinned, when they started self-identifying, they, they had the identity of God. But because of the temptation of Satan, he got them to look at themselves. And remember that Eve was deceived, but Adam chose. Yeah. He chose to be with his wife. Now, as a consequence, in Genesis 3.15, it says, it talks, this prophetic word that God gives is about the seed of the woman that would be raised up, that would crush the head of Satan. So the whole Old Testament is in preparation for the coming Messiah. And, you know, John 1 says, in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, the word was God, the Amen. same was in the beginning with God. So you realize that a man, you know, because John is talking about Christ, Jesus Christ as mm -hmm. the man or the son of God. Yeah. And so what it's doing is, in essence, is this. It's talking about this, this God 
that would take on flesh. That's what it says in first in John 1, mm -hmm. 14. It says that he dwelt among us. He put on flesh. So he had to take off his godness and he had to put on humanity. So he had to be born as a son of a woman, a mm. seed of a woman. And so when you, you look at this, this was the master plan of God. So when, when I read the Old Testament, I'm looking for every scripture that points to the coming Messiah. Mm -hmm. So even in the Passover, they, they're sitting down at a table representing the 12th chapter of Exodus. They're doing that on purpose, looking forward to the coming promise keeper, Amen. the coming promise. And so when, you know, and this just always gets me. So when you get to the Last Supper, then Jesus is saying, all of these 4,000 years, I have desired to have this particular meal with you because it mm. represents the purpose for me being here. And remember what it says in 1 John, it says, yeah. for this purpose was the Son of God, God manifest that he might destroy all the works of the wicked one. Yes. And so... I look at it like this. We, we need to evaluate everything, every plan that God had, and we need to look through Scripture. I, I don't know about you, man. When I'm looking in Scripture and I find the connection between the books, and I see that there is this, you know, like that book was written that we've taught in the Bible college, which is called uh, the Thin Red Line or something yeah, like yeah. that. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting that it ties all the way from Genesis all the way to the coming Messiah. Mm -hmm. And when you think about this, this was God's master plan because nobody could die for us yeah. that wasn't perfect. Right. Because in the day you eat thereof, it says in Genesis, you will surely die. Well, death became a reality in man and Jesus comes, and then in John 10, 10, it says, He came that we might have life till the full, the Amplified Version yeah. says, till it overflows. Yes, amen. And so I, I look at it. None of us could have the life or the influence of the Holy Spirit without the presence of Jesus Christ uh, being available for us to confess Him as Lord and Master over our lives. And then something changes. It may not be a tangible feeling, but there's something that takes place on the inside of you because the Bible says that old things passed away. Yeah. Behold, all things become new. You become a new class of man. You become different than the first Adam. You become like the second Adam, which was Jesus. And so that kind of stuff, man, that, that just really excites me. That's why the Bible is so important to us believers. Because yeah. I, I always tell all of the people in the Bible college, I said, you know, Pastor Josh preaches a message. He preaches the Word. But if you only live off of what he preaches and you don't delve into discovery yourself, yeah. the truth of the matter is you're not going to get very strong. Yeah, no, that's true. Yeah, you can only fly so high on borrowed wings. You can. I mean, we thank God for the revelation. That's good. That's good. It, I like that. True. One. Yeah, I, I stole it from Jesse Duplantis. <laughs> <laughs> so he take stole someone. it from somebody yeah, else too. Probably got it from you. <laughs> well, you know, it's like I, I, you know, I've always been, you know, I learned a long time ago. You can't live in another man's revelation. It's like you have to go to the Word of the Lord and you have to discover, you know, who you are, Jesus. You know, when I when I think about this, because he's our great example for everything. The word, like you said, you were getting into what we're going to be talking about next episode, John chapter one. You know, this word must become flesh in us. Yeah. Amen. And Jesus, he, he the Bible says, uh, you know, like you were referencing about, you know, how he how he basically the Bible says he emptied himself. Yeah. You know, and he he took on our form. He became what we are. And I, and I had a hard time with this when I first got saved, because when people would tell me, Oh, well, you know, you can heal the sick. You know, uh, you can, you know, cast out devils. You know, you can pray and God will hear. 
And I'm like, because Jesus did. And I'm like, duh, he was Jesus. You know, he had everything but a cape. You know, it's like, of course he can do those things. He was Jesus. And I didn't have the revelation that that he became what we are so that we can become what, what he, he is. is. Yeah. And, and, and once that clicked inside of me, you know, and him being that great example, I can't think of anybody else in the word of God I want to know more about than Jesus and how he behaved. And, and one of the things that came alive for me was when you read over in, in uh, Luke chapter four, you know, where Jesus, you know, he goes through, you know, he goes through the wilderness, you know, this temptation and, and, you know, 40 days of fasting, the devil's just trying to work him over. And it says right here, um, you know, that, that Jesus went in, you know, Luke chapter four, verse one, went Jesus being full of the Holy Ghost, you know, uh, returned from the Jordan was led by the spirit into the wilderness. He went in, f uh, you know, full of the Holy Ghost. But then the Bible says that when he came out, it says in verse 14, and Jesus returned in the power, you know, I mean, he, he, he came back a different way. He came back empowered. And this is where you really see his miracle ministry, you know, taking off. And what lit me up was that the first thing he did was he went to church, you know, as his custom was, it says. And in verse 17, it was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it is written, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach the deliverance of the captives and recovery of sight to the blind and to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. He closed the book. He gave it again to the minister and sat down and the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. And he began to say to them, this day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. And what God really showed me was that, you know, Jesus found himself in here. <laughs> I mean, we know that he is the word, but it's like, this is where we find who we are, right? Sure. It, it's when we come to the word of God and, and when we embrace this word, you know, how, Im how important is it for us, you know, as, as a people, you know, to handle, you know, Jesus came with purpose. In, in this time of the year is when everybody's, you know, given presents and, you know, and, you know, uh, putting up their three wise men in the front yard, you know, in the little manger scene. But what should we be getting out of this season? You know, what is the thing that should be standing out when it comes to Jesus? He, he came to be sacrificed. But but what was the intent? What was the intent of of him coming in? And what should this season remind us about all year long? Well, I mean, the thing of it is, is that we have no life unless we have a life in Christ Jesus. Mm. And so it's, it's so simple when you think about this, because, you know, Paul wrote to the church at Rome, you know, in the 10th chapter, he just says, and it tells you this exactly, if you believe in your heart and you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, you're going to be saved. Well, what, what do we save from? We're saved from that old life, and we're saved to a new life that Christ Jesus gives us. And that identity is what we acknowledge, and then all of a sudden we become more, if we endeavor to grow, we become more like him so that he's seen in us. Mm. And, what, and the reality of it is that was God's intention through Jesus Christ, that we would be followers of Christ so that we would be imitators of Christ. So you can't, you can't even look at the book of John in the 14th chapter, and then take that scripture out of verse 12 and say, and these things are greater things than these will you do because I go to the Father. Mm -hmm. And so when you think about that, even those questions that you had when people were saying, well, you know, you can lay hands on the sick and they'll recover, and you, know, and you doubt yeah. that because you're just thinking, well, that was just Jesus. A man. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, that's what Jesus is saying. Yeah. You're just a man, but it's the Spirit the same spirit, Romans 8 says, the mm. same spirit that raised Christ from yes, the dead yes. has quickened your mortal body. So it's not about you. It's about you submitting to that spirit that resides within you mm. that causes you to be able to do the things that you do. I mean, you think about this when the revelation knowledge b begins to flow with you. Yeah. And, and you're up there ministering and all of a sudden, you know, your God changes your deal. Yeah. That's exciting to me because then you know that God is just entering in and he's got something to say that's way beyond 
what you have figured out. <laughs> yeah. You know, my job, your job, is to study to show yourself approved. Mm -hmm. So that's what you do, even if God does not use one word yeah. of what you've come up with. It's so true. You know, my, I always tell my media department, I said, you know, you guys are so blessed. I said, you guys get two messages every service. You get the one that I gave you before I preached, and then you get the one I did preach. <laughs> well, you know, at, at church, for example, you know, when, you know, when uh, I've ministered there at the church, they come to me and they want to know the title. I have a hard time coming up with a title because yeah, I don't know. I'm the same way. I don't know because the thing of it is, is that if I go submitted to God to minister, I want that Holy Spirit because isn't that what Jesus yeah. said? He said, it's to your advantage that I go away. Because mm -hmm. unless I go away, the comforter will not come. Yeah. And what he will do is that he will not only bring to remembrance all those things that have been imparted into your life through generations, mm. through prayers of your family, through things when you were not serving God, mm. that you heard that all of a sudden they come flowing up out of you because the Holy Spirit lives in you. Yeah. And that, that Spirit of God has such power and such authority that we, we don't even recognize most of the time how powerful potentially we really are. Yeah. Because because I, I look at it like this, you know, Mark eleven mm. is an example of the God kind of faith. Yeah. Right. Yes. That's and right. so that's I, right. you know, why did Kenneth Hagin teach for all those years on Mark eleven twenty two twenty three twenty four twenty yeah. five? <laughs> because if we got it, yeah, we'd have it made Everything in the shade, man. <laughs> You get God kind of results when you have God kind of faith. Yeah, you do. You know, I think it's that, uh, you know, you got to come to that place to where, like for me, it was realizing that Jesus was 100%. He was 100% God, but he became 100% man. But he was a man anointed. And I think that's what threw the demons off when uh, when you started casting them out. They said, man, we adjure thee by God. You know, what are you doing? You know, they didn't think he had a right to be there. And they didn't realize, no, he's a man anointed. Yeah. And and I think that when we can, when we understand how, how God works with this word, and you hit on something um, that we kind of touched on um, last month, you know, uh, during Thanksgiving uh, holiday, you know, we were talking about the fruit of the spirit, you know, um, just how that is the character of God. That's the nature of God. And that's something that, that grows and develops in you because, Really, what we're after is to be unseen. I mean, we really want Jesus to be the one that takes center stage in our lives. And I think Jesus said it best when he said, you know, when you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Yeah. You know, and, and that's what my prayer has always been, because what I've learned in, in life and in ministry, I should say, is that when people have a problem with God or they've had a problem with organized religion, it's not that they had a bad encounter with God. They had a bad encounter with someone that said that they were representing God. You know, they, they, their humanity was seen, you know, not, not Christ seen for who he is. And, and I think that when we, when we step towards, uh, that word, I mean, this is, this is where you find who you are. I mean, your identity is with divinity and, and it's, it's in him, the living word that we, we live, we move, we, we find our being. How, if if that's the case, if if your life is in the Word, and like you said, you know, uh, you know, Mark chapter eleven, how important faith is, and we know faith comes by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. You know, why was it so important that the Word became flesh? I mean, wh why was it so important that that Jesus had to manifest? You know, uh, why couldn't he just stay on the throne and in uh, you know, and we, we had the Old Testament. You know, how come that wasn't enough? Because man could not be like God. Mm. And so unless Jesus came as a man and then showed us, gave us the example of being a follower of Christ. So being a follower of Christ, I mean, you can say that you are that all day long, mm. but that means you should be demonstrating Christ. Mm. You should be doing the thing that that the Bible has guaranteed that you and I have the authority to do instead of looking to, you know, and believe me, I'm not putting anybody down, Come but on. Benny Hinn or Kenneth Copeland yeah. or Jerry Seville and looking to these gifts 
and thinking that all of the miracle working power of God is wrapped up in that. I have been healed when my daughter has prayed for me yeah. at five years old. Come on. Instantly mm. healed. So what did that have to do with spiritual maturity? That just had to do with total trust in what she was, what she was told by her mom. Mm. And so she just did it. She didn't even want to do it. And she just did it <laughs> in obedience to her mom. And I got instantly healed. What, what is the difference between you and me as mature Christians and a child that just trusts? Well, that's why Jesus said this. Unless you become like a little child, mm -hmm. you can't really enter in yeah. to all of the benefits of the kingdom because your, your head's going to get in the way. Mm -hmm. Your experiences will get in the way. What you know about life is going to get in the way. All your doubts and unbeliefs, because remember, that's, that's Mark 11 and shall not doubt, mm -hmm. but shall believe yeah. that those things mm -hmm. that he say will come to pass. He'll have whatever he says, mm -hmm. you know, he saith. Yeah. And so, you know, I, I look at it this, and I, I'm thinking, how do you tap in? Because truthfully, the, the, you know, like we know this because of the camp that we're involved in. Yeah. We know this, that there has to be a demonstration of the power. Yes. Because remember, that's what Paul said. He said, my preaching is not with come enticing on, come words, on, come on. but it's in demonstration mm -hmm. and power. Mm -hmm. In other words, like uh, Mark 16, 20 says, they went everywhere mm -hmm. preaching the word mm -hmm. and Jesus worked with them, confirming the word with signs following. Yes. Well, we should expect the confirmation of the word because we're doing the work of the ministry. And I think we just need to push it a little bit for, further mm -hmm. and have an expectation that every service is de about deliverance. Every service is about healing. Every service is about the, the manifestation of the Holy Spirit. I don't know about you, man, but you know, in my life in pastoring, there have been times, man, I've been so far in over my head because the Holy yeah. Spirit was <laughs> taken over. Yeah, that I truthfully did not know what to do. I was at a loss for words. I mm. think we need to be at a loss for words. Yes, because sometimes we 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 actually mess up the anointing because we interject explanation instead yeah. of just letting the Holy Spirit. Because yeah. first of all, the Holy Spirit is not going to go around offending people that are easily offended. He's trying to teach them. He's trying yeah. to draw them in. Yeah. Right. And yet, what we'll do is that we'll, you know, if you, you pray out in tongues and if you prophesy and all that kind yeah. of stuff, we have organizations, we have procedures about, you know, co you know, calming that thing down, you yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. I, th I think in a way that we become fearful of what the Holy Spirit will do. Yet, you and I get up there and we preach and we're expecting the Holy Spirit to enter in yeah. and to take over. Yeah. Be because then we learn too. No, absolutely. I mean, because, well, I mean, you think about how many times you've been in churches where uh, you've seen the Spirit of God moving and they weren't ready for it. Yeah. They weren't used to it. I've seen them sh literally shut it down because it's like they're afraid. Yeah. They're afraid of it. And, and it's like what I've learned is that, you know, God wants to take over and, and we have to give him that right. You know, I think that, you know, God sent his son Jesus to save us and not just from the devil, but to save us from ourselves. And when we embrace him and we embrace all that he has for us, his word, I mean, his word is what changes us. And you have to be willing to meet him right there at what he said. God will not lie. And what I learned is that when, when we come to a place where we've been prepared, we've exposed ourselves to the word, <clears throat> God's going to demonstrate. It's like what you said, there's going to be a demonstration. And I, I think the greatest thing that God demonstrates to us is the love that he has for us Definitely, to love us yeah. enough to give us his son. You know, we were talking about this yesterday, Mina Leia, we're here in the studio. And she said, you know, one of the things that amazed me, she said about the love of the father, she said, I didn't understand it until I became a parent. She said, is that it's one thing for you to be willing to sacrifice yourself. She said, you would sacrifice yourself before you'd sacrifice your children because your love for your children is greater than the love you have for yourself. She said, that's why God gave Jesus. Sure. Because it was the greater love. Yeah. And it's the love that we don't understand. Yeah. And I'm just like, Lord, help us. You know, help us to understand that kind of love to where you were willing to give your best. And I think that during this season, 
you know, that when it comes to your gift giving, man, remember how precious the gift of God is and right. was. Amen. I mean, nobody's going to ever love you the way Jesus loves you. And my prayer is that, you know, man, you'll open your heart wide to him. Amen. If, you know, you've sinned, we all have. The Bible says we've all sinned and fall short of the glory of God. You know, but there's no other way to heaven but through Jesus Christ. Amen. And if you ask him to forgive you, the Bible says he's faithful and just to pray. Amen. He'll forgive you now. Amen. And so yes, call will. on the name Thank of the you, Lord. God. The Bible says you'll be saved. Ask him to forgive you. Amen. And he will set you free. Amen. Pray this Thank prayer you. with me right now. Amen. Receive this gift. Amen. This free gift. Amen. It costs a lot, but it's offered to you and I for free. Just say, Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe you are the Son of God. I believe that you died on the cross for all my sins. I believe you died on the cross for And I believe sins. that you rose again. I believe that you rose to again. A to a new life. A high life. A, high life. a life that you offer me. A life that you and it's a life that I receive. It's a life that I lay my old life down. My old life and I take up that new life. I take up a life, life with life. you. I'm going to serve you, Jesus. All the days of my life. I'm yours now and forevermore in Jesus' name. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, God heard it. Amen. You received that gift of salvation. I'm telling you, the greatest adventure of your life, amen, amen. has just begun. Amen. amen. God bless you. Thank you for being with me and Dr. Rogers today. Amen. We look forward to being with you guys soon on another episode of Kingdom Concepts. Amen.